Sir, and I'm an IOS engineer working at Circus Life in Singapore. So I am born and brought up in India. So I have worked previously in two other startups uh, in past, and uh, I'm super excited to be here. And let's just get started. Um, we can get started, right, Madonna? Okay. Then should be okay. Can you hear my audio? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, yes, we can get started. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, just to mention, if, if anybody has a question, please feel free to put them all on the chat and I will definitely bring them forward for Anu or she will share her social media where you can find her. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. So hi. Today I'll be speaking about server-driven UI and DLS. So first of all, we'd really like to thank Swift, uh, sorry, uh, the Women Who Code community for this opportunity. Uh, so let's walk through the content of the talk. Uh, we'll first start with understanding what is DLS, what does backend-driven UI mean, what are the key components of this system, followed by a short demo and discussing on what are the benefits of having this setup. So uh, to begin with, let's talk about what is DLS. DLS stands for Design Language System. It's a collection of reusable components guided by some set of rules and standards. So this set of rules, constraints, and principles not only helps you to define up, uh, how the appearance, how would it appear in your uh, application, but also helps in streamlining the UI behavior throughout your company's wide product. Uh, the key principles of DLS is to, uh, so yeah, uh, it is a source of truth uh, for your UI decisions. So what does that mean? When a company grows, uh, the team might need to iterate over the feature more quickly. One team might be divided into smaller uh, teams, which might handle a specific product of your company. So this opens a window of inconsistency if there is no source of truth defined. So DLS here helps us in defining that center system, uh, which helps you to design a scalable UI language and also streamlining your UI behavior throughout the product. And uh, this consists of a code, your design programs, and documentation where you can keep the mapping of code and design program for future references. Uh, and it is an uh, iterative process as it grows with your project. So whenever you encounter a new use case in your uh, uh, requirement, uh, your team should you know, very well think about uh, the scalability of it. Like if you want to handle the same use case in, in some other point in your application, it should be flexible enough to be reused throughout your project. So the key principle of DLS is to increase efficiency, consistency, and also enhance the scalability of your product. So this diagram pretty much defines the basic building blocks of your DLS. It consists of uh, identity, principles, and best practices when combined together to form some smaller components and patterns. These components and patterns are maintained by designers and uh, developer teams to make the best use of DLS to deliver best quality within an optimized product timeline. So is this something new in technology uh, tech industry? So no, if you look back in 1975, NASA defined a NASA graphic manual in which they documented everything from color coding to iconography and also the component structure of their spaceship. And then in 2000, uh, Apple introduced Aqua and it was a remarkable speech by Steve Jobs in which he mentioned the design actually intended to make the user feel like licking the view when they see the UI. So it covers, uh, how um, the team has really thought through about the use cases to give the Mac user a seamless UI and um, exp um, seamless experience, basically. <clears throat> so, and if you observe that the, the controls and the behavior are even intact today, like 20 years after it first got introduced. And then in 2011, Bootstrap was a very important toolkit and it was a boom in the world of web development technology. And in 2013, Brad Frost introduced a term called atomic designing. Uh, it explains how smaller components like your atoms and molecules can help you to build an organism, and which gives a template to, to create a fully functioning pages. 
Um, and finally, in 2014, Google launched the material design. And post this launch, all the products of Google, like Gmail, YouTube, etc., started to follow those rules and guidelines there. And it was a huge milestone uh, for design system, and it has gained a wide, a wide popularity since then. So, um, uh, seeing the history of all these big companies having a DLS setup, we can definitely agree it's a beneficial practice for a company as it grows. So, let us look at what are some of the key uh, importance of DLS in your company. Firstly, the set of reusable components that you define can be reu can be assembled and reused to create n number of application. So, say if you want to publish a smaller application for your target users, then it would be best if your current existing user can seamlessly onboard to your new application, taking the learnings from the existing uh, one. And um, this this could only be done if you have a single source of truth for your UI decisions. And um, Next, it gives a suit of your product unique but consistent look and feel. So uh, it would help in retaining customer and also increase customer happiness and satisfaction. It also helps to raise confidence, as we just saw. Like it would be easy for a person to you know onboard from your one application to another if they are familiar with your product. Followed by some company level goals. If you have a DLS setup, then the company, the designers can focus more on what is the right user experience and how can they, they can work on making the UI more meaningful. And the engineers can focus more on infrastructure, performance, and et cetera. So uh, let's see, look at some of the companies uh, who have set up their uh, design system guidelines. So though many companies have set their own uh, design system guidelines, but few of the companies like Atlassian, Gojek, Spotify, and Airbnb has made their um, uh, their uh, uh, DLS system available for everybody. So this is, these are some of the interesting projects that you should definitely look out if it interests you. Um, talking all about this, then what should be the right time to get started for your uh, to define a DLS for your project? Like to be honest, um, it totally depends on what project you are doing and what is your company's vision and guideline. If you have if you have a small team, then probably having a simple documentation can be a source of truth for you. Uh, it can definitely be. A a uh, costly process for a fast paced growing company, but it's definitely cost to, uh, worth the cost because you'll see the benefits in long term. You'll be able to iterate over the feature much more faster uh, with best quality delivery. So uh, how should we get started with this? So um, as a uh, term we learned about the atomic designing, maybe you should start with defining the smaller components. So you might as well like to pick up uh, standardizing the color coding that is used throughout the application, the typograph, the sizing, the padding here and there. So once you have this key basic element set up, you can start creating reusable components and widgets. So it 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 might not be a straightforward process, but um, having a dedicated team of designers and developers sit together to you know design. Maybe pick up one of your page, which, ha which has the most variety of uh, views. Just try to uh, make those component reusable, and then take learning from that page to uh, other pages of your application. So yeah, next, let's talk about what is a backend driven UI. Um, uh, so let's take an example uh, of uh, John, who is an iOS developer, and Mr. Manager, who coordinates between the product designers and de uh, developer teams. So this is how the application looks like currently. There are a few tabs in the bottom, and the first page has an image view, followed by some text, uh, dynamic height text. So one day, Mr. Manager comes to John and says that there is a requirement of adding a referral card in their application. And um, as per the requirement, John um, understand what are the things that he has to put in. He clears all the requirement and get the estimated deadline, um, uh, delivery date, and he st starts working on that task. He creates the UI. He performs the dev testing. He does the regression test and gives demo to the team. And finally, upload the build to App Store review. And uh, he does the scientist test and makes the app live and informs the manager that it, this has been done. So 
after a few days, Mr. Manager comes back to join and asks for a new requirement of moving the referral card from the bottom watch to, to uh, uh, above, just below the image. And explains that um, because after looking at the stats, he found out that the number of people landing on this page uh, was a bit off to the number of people tapping on the referral card. So he wanted to increase the visibility. So uh, John one again uh, clarifies all the requirement and give an estimated delivery date. He he goes through the process again. He you know uploads uh, he updates the UI. He performs testings, give demo, and submit the bill for review, and then make it live. So um, after that, uh, Mr. Managers come back and say that it really worked out for them. And uh, however, the product has finally now decided to add the same card on the other tabs as well. So John says that. He was happy to know that it worked for them, but he also mentioned that he's in the middle of some engineering task and if it's okay, if he can pick up after completing it. Uh, so Mr. Manager says that he understands the situation, but then because uh, product team has some uh, prioritized even plans placed around it, so it would be great if he can pick it up first. So John, yes, agrees to those and he uh, picks up the task and delivers it. Um, but that night, again, John started to brainstorm if there was a way in which, you know, team can avoid doing repetitive tasks and if uh, new app releases could be avoided for some smaller changes and maybe product team has the you know, power to update at least the widgets on the fly with minimum dev effort. So uh, while searching about ways to solve these issues, uh, John came across DLS. So he understood if he could standardize the basic UI elements, uh, it would be a significant improvement in the quality of releases and reduction in development time. And also, uh, if they can standardize this element, it could be used to re uh, define your reusable components and widgets. And then comes, uh, and then he comes to know about the concept of driving your UI from backend. Uh, it was the most important thing, of course, to have a uh, reusable components and widget defined in place first. And then uh, maybe the backend can decide what to be shown on what pages. Um, and, uh, and having a separate tool for the product team uh, through which they can uh, control uh, what is to be shown, maybe some image, some text, if they can change directly from there, it would be perfect. Uh, so we, we do have John's code with us, so let's quickly do a demo with that. So this is how the application looks like. It has some image, text, and the card that we have recently added uh, in the tab 1 and tab 2. So for demo purpose, we have used a UI table view controller to render our view. And uh, creating a base table view controller helps us to take the boilerplate code from each of the view controllers. So here in the uh, in setting up table view controller, you can uh, register some of your cells or maybe do your know, app, app specific design setup. And uh, for the other screens, you may you know just inherit from the base view controller and do the page specific content loading. And uh, for demo purpose, we have also used, uh, fetched the data from mock JSON files, which is here. And um, it's worth noting that uh, all this while we have been talking about using reusable components and widgets. So uh, widgets usually helps us in defining what the layout of the page would be like. For example, here we have in the form of a list, one followed by the another. So this list has uh, renders some array of components. Now, this array of components inside has a heterogeneous collection. So um, it has a different type and data format for each of the view. Like um, if you see, you have a, a tile text, which can be your title followed by your subtitle and um, so forth. Similarly, in the, uh, in the second page, we have the same. So let's see how uh, making your app backend driven helps in you know, resolving uh, issues of uploading app again. So simply, if you want to move this referral card from the bottom most to the top screen, all this require is to have a POJO change or uh, the response change from the backend side. 
we just moved it from top to the bottom and we reran the application and voila it's here um similarly now if suppose in tab 2 you want to add this referral card just below the image you all you have to do is talk to the backend team get the json in this uh, api call or maybe json and if you read on the application it is just here so as simple as that and for for other you know actions maybe you can get some action object inside this itself so whenever user tap on it you can handle in the app side like it should open a deep link or take user to some uh, external page or something like that so yeah that's it uh so yeah yeah let's now talk about what are the key components of making your uh, backend driven ui so uh, definitely. Uh, first thing, uh, it is also known as backend for frontend um, setup. So first thing, you need to have a well-defined components and widget structure for your for mobile application, both for Android and iOS. And next, you need to have a, a backend service, which would be your aggregation and transformation layer. So this would act as a middle layer to aggregate data from your upstream APIs and transforming the data in the form of components and widgets, uh, which is sent to the mobile team. And then we need an understanding between the design team and developers to reuse the uh, component instead of every time creating a new uh, new component and exhausting the list. And fourth, it, uh, it's an optional thing, uh, maybe a platform or UI, which is more closer to the product team to add new uh, components so that they can change the things on the fly with minimum dev effort. So having talked about uh, uh, what are the benefits of having a reusable components and structure, let's now understand what would be the benefit of having the middle layer in between, which, would, which is the back end for front end layer. So first, it would help us to uh, uh, take it down to just one API to render your page. So uh, in companies with microservices and even otherwise, there might be a scenario when you, in order to render your one page, you might have to make multiple calls. So having a BFF helps in reducing those number of calls into just one. And then internally, all of those microservices can com communicate to each other to fetch the data for us, which also uh, means lesser load time because um, when we make multiple calls from mobile end to the back end, then uh, it has to pass through some API get gateway and which generally takes longer uh, than services internally communicating to each other. And then uh, because of that, we would have uh, more control over er error and timeout handling. And we can do a graceful uh, show like if like the backend can decide like which all uh, APIs are mandatory and when to fail the API, uh, the complete page of any one of the uh, API call is failing. Um, and this, hence, uh, we will have an, a less business logic, less hard coding on the app side. And localization can be very well handled if it is driven from backend, like for any single text change, you don't need to send a new uh, app releases. Uh, maybe the uh, adding and removing and repositioning of your widgets like we saw, uh, uh, saw in the demo, it would be super easy. So uh, how do we map the backend and UI configuration? Now, first place, we have the reusable components. Second place, we have the backend driven the middle layer in between. So how do we uh, make both of them interact to each other? We need to have a common understanding of your widgets and components. So and as also discussed, this widgets in the demo, we used a um, UI table view controller, but we can also use uh, other uh, UI table view controller. So we can also use collection view, maybe uh, scrollable stack view to lay out your uh, uh, views. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so thank you so much for uh, listening to my talk and I'm really looking forward to your comments and feedbacks about this talk in the Slack channel and if you have any other doubts do reach out to me yeah thank you thank you very much Anu that mm -hmm. was amazing and kudos to being so brave and giving us a great talk so thank you <laughs> yeah if you're in the chat section or if you have any questions for Anu please feel free to reach out to her Please, you can give out your handles. 
like your Twitter or LinkedIn where people can reach reach to you. And then please, yeah, yeah, yeah her Twitter again so we can connect. Please share your Twitter. And then please feel free to join other sessions that are ongoing currently, like uh, on other, other sections. You just go to the session and choose this the talk you want to listen to and thank you again very much i think Anne, you can stay on for a little bit if somebody has a question and then they can ask you please feel free to ask any question Yeah, I'm not sure if yeah. I was rushing too much, but yeah, if anything, anywhere I can, you know, uh, uh, talk about again, it would be, you know, my pleasure. Yeah, I think we have a question there. Where do you recommend learning mobile skills? Uh, there are, you know, multiple sites. So it really depends on what language you want to learn. Like I can speak more about iOS. Um, so there official site is really amazing uh, the, the way apple has documented everything is amazing and then if you want to have little more of you know uh, direct touch of human touch you can uh, uh, go and check out ravenderlink.com they have beginner level to you know advanced level topics and you might as well go to objective c dot uh, objc dot io it has a really nice swift talks again where you can you know start building your app from zero to you know a full fledged app which you can ship and for more, definitely, you should join the Women Who Code mobile channel. Everybody would be happy to share and, you know, help you progress every day in your work. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll second that. That's very true. Uh, we have another question here which says, can you suggest good links for backend for front end concepts? Uh, so it is actually uh, more of company specific thing. How ready is your uh, company to dedicate a uh, team to work on the backend thing. So for us, we started uh, using a Golang project and then we internally came out like, uh, what is our company's requirement? Uh, it was mostly a list. So we want uh, some company might need some something like Spotify. They might need a collection view, right? Because you have to scroll all the way this and this. So it's dependent on company. But yeah, definitely I can look for some links and then post in the Slack channel later. So you can again propose this to your company and decide the timeline how it works for you. OK, I think that's all the questions we had. And thank you very much, Ellie, for being in, engaging with the chat section. And thank you very much, Anu. And you did super great. Thumbs up. And see you Thank you, you Anu. <laughs> yeah, and everybody here, thanks for your support. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone.